hello everyone in this video i will solve for you in details with explanation uh, final exam practice released by professor Metz for the course chemistry 111 university course let us start the protein randomase has a molecular mass or molecular weight 1.6 times 10 to power 5 one microgram of this protein costs hundred dollar how many molecules of randomase are in one microgram of randomase so we want to find the number of molecules per microgram i will start by the given we have every one mole of this protein corresponds to 1.6 times 10 to the power 5 gram let me change now the mole into molecules and we want the molecules uh, up in the numerator so that will be every one mole corresponds to avogadro number of molecules 6.023 times 10 to power 23 molecules now let me change gram into microgram and the microgram we want it down in the denominator we know that every one gram corresponds to 10 to power 6 microgram and the final answer is 3.77 times 10 to power 12 molecules per microgram so the best answer is b the percentage composition of sulfur in sodium sulfate first of all this is sodium sulfate the atomic mass of sodium is 23 sulfur 32 and oxygen 16. the formula is the percentage of sulfur in sodium sulfate it's the mass of sulfur over the mass of one mole of this compound multiplied by 100. so let me find the molar mass of one mole of this compound so that corresponds to the mass of the compound which is 2 times 23 plus 32 plus 4 times 16 which is equal 142 gram per mole let us apply this in the formula mass of sulfur we have in the compound one sulfur which is 32 divided by the molar mass of one mole which is uh, uh, 142 multiplied by 100 and the answer is 22.53 which is approximately a number three consider the compound whose lewis dot structure is drawn below note that this is merely the lewis dot structure it doesn't actually represent the bond angles okay the oco bond angle represented or labeled by theta this angle is approximately equals to what let us see uh, carbons uh, oco this one how many bones around it this is one bone one bone two bones usually we treat two bones as one bone when we have three bones around an element it means that it is triangular planar according to vesper so triangular planar that has angle 120 degree so the best answer is 120 degree we will continue number four in an experiment similar to the one you did in the lab 14 gram of molybdenum metal react with sulfur producing 21.02 gram of a compound that contains only molybdenum and sulfur what compound is produced the compound i'm looking for is molybdenum sulfur i have to know x and y such that i will know the compound x and y represents the ratio of number of moles in small hole ratio numbers so i have to find the number of mole for each one molybdenum has an atomic mass 95.95 .95, sulfur 32 
let me start by finding first of all the number of mole of molybdenum which is the mass over the molar mass the mass it's given to me 14 over its atomic mass molar mass 95.5 which is 0 0.146 moles similarly i will find for sulfur i have the mass total 21.02 i can find the mass of sulfur so we know that mass total equal mass of molybdenum plus mass of sulfur because it's made up only of these two elements so 21.02 minus 14 equal 7 or 2 which is the mass of sulfur so let me find now the number of mole of sulfur which is mass over molar mass 7.02 over 32 which is 0 0.219 moles now no ratio at all with decimals so in between these two i will choose the smallest number to divide by such that to find the smallest whole ratio so molybdenum i will this is the smallest whole number so it's 0 0.146 over 0 0.146 which is one and the sulfur is 0 0.219 over 0 0.146 which is 1.5 still i have 1.5 which is a decimal in order to change it into whole number i multiply this by 2 because 1.5 times 2 is 3 but i have also to multiply this by 2 to keep correct ratio so 2 times 1 is 2 so it's molybdenum 2 and 1.5 times uh, 2 is 3 so it's mo2 as 3 so part c is the answer number 5 photo dissociation of NO2 a major component of smog in cities eventually leads to the formation of irritants the photo dissociation is as follows NO2 in the presence of uh, light photo dissociation it means presence of light that has energy H and U H and U and O plus O requires photons this photon has a wavelength 398 nanometer so lambda is equal 398 nanometer this wavelength corresponds to an energy of what i need to find in kilojoule per mole i have this lambda nanometer for a photon anyhow he gave us a hint watch the units find the energy in one photon then calculate the energy in mole of photons okay let me start we know the formula e equal h nu which is h c over lambda h stands for planck's constant 6.626 times 10 negative 34 multiplied by the speed of light 3 times 10 to the power of 8 over 398 times 10 negative 9 because here in this formula lambda should be in meter in meter so nanometer to change into meter i multiply by 10 negative 9 and the energy will be equal to 4.99 times 10 negative 19 this is joule for every photon now let me change the joule for every photon into kilojoule per mole so we have 4.99 times 10 negative 19 joule per photon i will change first of all joule to kilojoule we want kilojoule up in the numerator so every one joule corresponds to 10 negative 3 kilojoule now let me change the photon into mole photon we want mole uh, in, down in the denominator so every one mole of a photon corresponds to a Vugadro number of photons so this this cancelled this this cancelled and i will be left with the unit that we want which is kilojoule per mole and the answer will be 300 kilojoule per mole which is e 
Now the oxidation number of chromium in potassium dichromate is what? Okay, we have according to the oxidation number rules, we have potassium group one, which is plus one. Oxygen, it's not superoxide or peroxide or with a, a, a compound like OF2 with an element that is more electronegative, so it's minus two as per the rules, which leaves chromium X, the one that I need to find. So let me construct simple equation, plus two, plus one times two is plus two, X times two X is plus two X, minus 2 times 7 is minus 14 all equal the total charge no charge here so it's zero now simple math calculation 2x equal 12 which leads that x equals 6 so part a is the answer now number 8 the electron configuration of the ion si plus let us see how to solve it according to the electron configuration si atomic number is 14 plus so it means we need 13 electrons to be distributed so that will be following the rule 1 as 2 2 as 2 2 p 6 3 as 2 and 3 p 1 so 10 12 13 which is option a number 8 a single atom of an element which has only uh, which has only one stable isotope has a mass so this is 8.47 times 10 negative 27 gram 23 gram what is the atomic mass of the element in grams per mole so this has only one isotope of atoms so we start we have 8.47 times 10 negative 23 grams per atom I want to, to find the atomic mass in grams per mole. So I want to change atom into mole. So simply, every one mole corresponds to Avogadro number of atoms. 6.023 times 10 to power 23 atoms. So this and this cancelled. And the answer will be 51.01 gram per mole so the best answer is c the molecular mass formula weight of magnesium hydroxide is closest to what magnesium atomic mass is 24 oxygen 16 hydrogen 1 so the molar mass of magnesium hydroxide is 24 plus 2 times what's inside the summation of oxygen and hydrogen atomic masses 16 plus 1 so it sum up to 58 gram per mole and the answer is b selene sih4 burns, burns spontaneously in air forming sand silica as io2 and water Using the following enthalpies of equation, calculate the delta H for this reaction. This remind me of Hess's law. I will arrange these equations such that to give me this equation. We have in the equation that we want to find its delta H, SiH4 silane in the reactant. Here in the given, we have it in the product, so I will flip equation 3. So I will name this one, two, I will call them by uh, numbers three. First of all, flip equation three. When I flip C lane SiH4, it will become in the reactant side and the reactant Si and H2 will constitute the product side. Upon flipping, the sign of the delta H enthalpy also will be flipped. So minus 34 kilo joule. The oxygen leave it for the end because automatically it will be arranged. Let me see SiO2, we want it in the product. And here also in equation two, it is in the product. So just, I will rewrite equation two, nothing, no changes to it. So we have Si solid plus O2 gas to give 
S I O two solid. Nothing I did to the second equation, so the enthalpy will be kept the same. Minus nine hundred eleven kilo joule. Now, H two O liquid in the required equation, it's uh, in the product and multiplied by two. In equation one, it is in the product but not multiplied, so I will multiply equation one by two. So multiply equation one by two so all of it definitely so 2h2 plus o2 gas plus o2 gas to give 2h2o liquid so the answer will be minus 286 multiplied by 2 which is minus 572 if i have to add these equations it will give me the equation of my interest because 2H2, 2H2 cancelled, SI, SI cancelled, and I am left one with silicane, SI, H4 gas, and two oxygen in the reactant side, one and one, sum up to two oxygen gas to produce SiO2 solid, SiO2 solid plus two molecules of water liquid so now i can calculate its delta h because upon the addition of equation i can add the enthalpies so it is minus 34 minus 911 minus 572 kilojoule and the final answer for the delta h is minus 1517 kilojoule and the answer is e 11 how much heat is required to convert 50 gram ice at minus 10 degrees celsius to liquid water at 15 degree use the thermodynamic i will give you this thermodynamic informations the informations that we need in order to solve the problem is the specific heat capacity of ice which is 2.09 joule per gram degree celsius we will need the specific heat capacity for water liquid which is 4.184 joule per gram degree celsius we will need the delta h fusion for water solid which is the ice which is 333 joule per gram all these informations we will need them let me draw a small sketch so we have here temperature and we have ice starting from minus 10 okay if this is minus 10 the remarkable temperature at which it starts melting is zero and then going to 15 so it will go up and then plateau form because as you know when we two phases coexist with each other solid and liquid a plateau form exists at zero which is the melting point and then go up to 15. so how many stages we will calculate its heat this is one two three so i have to calculate the heat for each stage one two and three and then to add them together we will start the first stage there is difference in chemistry in uh, temperature so in order to find its q1 i will use mc delta t c here is for ice because from minus 10 to zero still it is ice let me substitute the mass is equal 50 so 50 times 2.02 delta t is t final minus t initial t final it's zero minus minus 10 which is 10 and the final answer here it's 1045 joule like this we found the q1 let us move to q2 the q2 there is no difference in temperature we will use the information of delta h fusion every 333 joule it corresponds to fuse one gram of ice if i have 50 grams of ice what will be the amount of energy needed it will be 16,650 joule now q3 as we see in q3 
there is change in temperature so I use MC delta T definitely this times water specific capacity for water because from 0 to 15 now it's water liquid the mass is 50 the specific heat capacity for water 4.184 the change in temperature T final which is 15 minus 0 which is 15 equal 20 1833 joule now we have to add all these cues to get into the final answer and uh, no sorry sorry wait the answer for this one is is 3138 joule now to get into the final answer which is the total amount of heat required i add all the heats in different steps q1 plus q2 plus q3 so it will sum up to 20833 joule if i divide by 1000 because the options in kilojoule it will be 20.8 kilojoule and the best answer is a Number 12, ethanol burns in oxygen producing liquid water and carbon dioxide. If the reaction is carried out at constant pressure for each mole of ethanol that is burned, how much heat is produced? And he gave me the enthalpy on forma of formation for ethanol. Values that you will need, I will write them for you in, all this, in order to solve this problem. The value that you need for delta H formation for water liquid, delta H formation for water liquid, it's equal minus 285.8 kilojoule per mole. You will also need delta H formation for carbon dioxide gas, which is minus 393.5 kilojoule per mole and the delta H formation for oxygen its element always delta H formation even if he doesn't give it to you for elements is zero okay now to find the delta H of the reaction we use the formula that relates delta H and delta H formation which is equal sigma number of mole of product delta h formation of product minus sigma number of mole of reactant delta h formation of the reactant let me start for the product what do i have let me write the chemical equation balanced first of all in order to know how to solve this problem so because i will need stoichiometry definitely so we have ethanol which is c2h5oh plus i will write it balanced directly 7 over 2 oxygen to give 2 carbon dioxide plus 3 molecules of water now writing this i will be able to move to the other step which is delta h of any reaction in terms of delta h formation is sigma delta and P, the number of moles of products, delta H formation of product minus sigma number of moles of reactant, delta H formation of reactant. Let me substitute in the product we have 2 CO2. So I start by multiplying 2 times the delta H formation of CO2 that I gave you minus 393.5. Okay, then plus the water water how many we have in stoichiometry three so i write three times the delta h formation for water which is minus 285.8 now done from the product we have minus i put minus i open bracket to add because sigma means the summation to add the delta h uh, for the reactants in the reactants we have c2h5oh multiplied by one c2h5oh already he gave it to me minus 277 
minus 277.7 and that for the oxygen is zero. If I have to do these simple calculations by, between addition and subtraction, I will get final answer minus 1366.7 kilojoule per mole and the option is E. Now, number 13, Concept, ah, number 13, I cannot uh, solve it because I don't have the diagram, but I can give you a hint about it. Consider the transition, uh, the hydrogen atom energy diagram on the answer of this, anyhow, of this, the one that corresponds to the absorption of photon of shortest wavelength. Just I can give you a hint that the one with the shortest wavelength, the one with the shortest wavelength, corresponds to the one with the highest energy why based on the rule which is energy equal hc over lambda so energy and wavelength inversely proportional to each other number 14 an aqueous solution of silver nitrate so we have agno3 aqueous reacted with sodium chloride let us do double replacement so it will be agcl solid which is a white precipitate plus na and o3 aqueous so i'm expecting a white solid of silver chloride so silver chloride precipitates part d is the best answer now let us move to number 15 a 19.5 gram piece of molybdenum is heated to 100 degree and dropped into 50 grams of water initially at 15 degrees celsius so here in a beaker in a beaker i have i have dropped molybdenum that has t initial 100 because we heat it up to 100 and a mass of 19.5 we dropped it in a beaker contains water that had has t initial 15 degrees celsius and mass of 50 gram the final temperature recorded in thermometer it recorded 16.94 degrees celsius the heat capacity of water is, he gave it to me, 4.184. What is the heat capacity of molybdenum? So we want to find the heat capacity of molybdenum. We know that when we mix substances at different temperatures, num uh, there will be energy gaining and there will be energy lost. The one that will lose between 100 degrees Celsius and 15, 100 is the higher so it will lose energy for the sake of water that will gain energy and the rule is that as follows q, q gained equal minus q lost q it's mc delta t as we said the one that the substance that will gain the temperature is the water so m water specific heat capacity of water equal minus m of molybdenum specific heat capacity of molybdenum times its delta t now let us substitute the mass of water it's 50 specific heat capacity 4.184 delta t it's t final minus t initial which is 100 uh, which is uh, t gained is the water okay initial 15 and the final 16.94 so we subtract 16.94 minus 15, it's 1.94, equal, minus, mass of molybdenum that it's given to me, 19.5 times specific heat capacity of molybdenum, times T final, it's 16.94 minus 100, which is minus 83.06. Now, solving one equation with one unknown to find that the specific heat uh, of the molybdenum is 0 0.251 joule per gram Kelvin, which is equal 
251 which is matching party an oxygen atom has how many unpaired electrons if i have those quickly uh, do electron configuration it's 1s2 2s2 2p4 so the valence electrons if i want to draw them four electrons so one two three four so i'm left with two unpaired electrons and the answer is two when copper metal is inserted into silver nitrate solution silver is produced according to the following balanced equation if 3.14 gram of copper react completely with excess silver nitrate how much silver is produced so i have to deal with these two chemicals copper and two ages to solve this problem i will use stoichiometry so the first line according to stoic ratios and the second one is the given and the required i will start every 64 gram corresponds to 2 times 108 which is the atomic mass of silver so 2 times 108 every 3.14 gram should correspond to what mass cross multiply and i will find the mass of silver 10.5 59 gram and the best answer that suits this one is d here there is discrepancy in numbers because i'm using whole number of atomic mass but in their calculation they use 107 point something potassium reacts violently with water via the following reaction if two gram of potassium react with water what volume of hydrogen is produced so he's asking about the volume of hydrogen when the pressure of this gas hydrogen is one atmosphere and the temperature is 20 degree celsius okay I, I will get the benefit first of all of stoichiometry to find the ratio or the number of mole of hydrogen and then i will apply the ideal gas law pv equal nrt in order to find the volume so i have two potassium to produce hydrogen let me find the number of mole of hydrogen first of all the first line according to stoichiometry the second is the given and the required from the periodic table potassium is 39 so 39 times 2 which is 70 80 gram corresponds to one mole of hydrogen so every two gram corresponds to how many moles so the number of mole of hydrogen upon cross multiplying 0.026 moles now i will use uh, gas law ideal pv equal nrt i want v which is nrt over v number of mole i found it 0.026 r is 0.0821 temperature should be in kelvin in this formula which is 293 times 293 all divided by p which is one so the answer will be 0 0.625 liter which is close to part d number 19 a gas contains 78.14 percent boron and 21.86 percent hydrogen what will be the empirical formula so boron and hydrogen i have to know the subscripts to know the empirical formula we have the percentages by weight the atomic mass of boron is 10.81 that of hydrogen is one let m total equal 100 gram which means that the mass of boron is 78.14 gram and the mass of hydrogen is 21.86 gram let me find the number of moles because x and y represent the ratio of number of moles so the number of mole of boron is the mass 78.14 over 10.81 which is equal to 7.23 and that of hydrogen 21 
0.86 over 1 which is 21.86 definitely i will choose the smallest whole ratio to divide both by because in the ratios we never see the cells it's just ratio of small whole numbers so i divide both by the smallest number 723 723 so the boron will be 1 and the hydrogen will be 3 so the empirical formula is BH3 which is part C number 20 automobile airbags are inflated by the decomposition of sodium azide according to the following balanced equation what mass of sodium azide so we are looking for the mass of sodium azide required to provide the nitrogen needed to inflate 25 liter bag to a pressure of 1.3 at temperature which is 25 so from this i will be able to find the number of mole of nitrogen from this info volume pressure and temperature let me start by finding the number of mole of nitrogen then to use stoichiometry to find the mass of azide so for nitrogen we can say pv equal nrt which means n equal pv over rt definitely in this equation certain units should be used pressure should be in atmosphere volume liter this is mole this is r 0.0821 atmosphere liter per kelvin mole and this should be in kelvin so if they are not uh, if the numbers given not in the correct uh, units we have to change them we have to convert them into the appropriate units so now the pressure is in atmosphere okay so 1.3 the volume is in liters so times 25 over r which is universal constant 0. 0.0821 the temperature here should be changed into kelvin by adding 273 so it will be 298 and the number of mole of nitrogen upon calculation 1.33 moles of nitrogen this will help me a lot by using now stoichiometry to find the mass of sodium azide so the first line according to stoic and the second is the given and required because i want the mass so i will use here the ratio the mass so molar mass of nan3 times 2 it's 130 gram corresponds to three moles because i found the moles of nitrogen so every 1.33 moles the one i found should correspond to what mass of azide so upon crisscross multiplication it will be 57 0.63 and the answer is D. Number 21, 0.381 gram of ethylene oxide placed in 250 ml container produces pressure 0.833. What is the molar mass of ethylene oxide? Okay, we use PV equal and RT, but N but n is equal the mass over the molar mass so we have uh, we want the molar mass okay so we can say that n is pv over rt which means mass over molar mass equal pv over rt now let us substitute the values that we have 0 0.381 over the molar mass the one i need to find pressure in atmosphere 0 0.833 volume it's in milli i divide by thousand so it will be 0 0.25 liter over r 0 0.082 and the temperature given to us in degree it should be changed into uh, kelvin by adding 273 so times 293 upon calculation the mass will be 43.99 gram per mole which is a deuterium is an isotope of hydrogen with an atomic mass of 2 amu the atomic symbol for deuterium is d since hydrogen and deuterium are chemically very similar one of the few simple methods of separating the two isotopes relies 
on diffusion. This method relies on the fact that H2 diffuses what times as fast as HD. Okay, the formula that deals with diffusions, which is Graham's law, that relates the velocity to the molar masses. So the velocity, we can say the velocity of hydrogen over the velocity of deuterium, it's radical molar mass of deuterium, which is an isotope as we said, deuterium HD over the molar mass, because we are uh, symbolizing deuterium by D over the molar mass of the gas hydrogen. Molar mass of the uh, HD, H is one, deuterium is two as it's given. So the molar mass here is three over two which is 1.22. Now cross multiply, it gives us that the velocity of hydrogen is 1.22, the velocity of deuterium. So the answer is C. Number 23, one of the earliest methods of producing nitric acid was by the reaction of sodium nitrate with sulfuric acid. <clears throat> if 426 gram of sodium nitrate molecular weight 85 and 226 gram of sulfuric acid molecular weight 98.1 allowed to react what is the maximum number of grams of nitric acid can be produced as you can see for every reactant a given he gave me for every reactant the mass so this is excess limiting problem first of all i have to check the excess from the limiting and to solve then later on for the number of grams of nitric acid always in uh, limiting the uh, excess of, uh, uh, i use uh, first of all uh, to change how i uh, yeah i chose to change the number the mass into number of moles so let me find the number of mole for sodium nitrate first of all which is the mass over the molar mass 426 over 85 which is 5.01 more. Similarly, I will find the number of mole of sulfuric acid, 226 over 98.1, which is 2.3 mole. Now let me find the mole ratios to check which excess, which limiting. I take the equation to an AMO3, H2SO4. The first one is stoic. We have two moles and here one mole. The one that I found is 5.01 mole, and this is 2.3. Now, let me find the ratio of moles to see which one in excess, which one is the limiting. The ratio of moles of sodium nitrate given over stoic. This is the given. This is the stoichiometric ratio. So it's 5.01 over 2, approximately 2.5. And the ratio for H2SO4, is 2.3 over 1 which is 2.3 indicating that h2so4 is the limiting now because we know that h2so4 is the limiting reagent i will use it in stoichiometry to continue solving the problem <clears throat> from the reaction h2so4 to give to <coughs> hno3 the first line according to stoic second given and required i can say every one mole corresponds to 126 gram which is the molar mass times the moles every 2.3 mole should correspond to how many grams the answer will be 289.8 which is close to 208.90 so the answer is a in number 24, which of the following compounds is polar? It, which, polar means they have uh, a net dipole moment greater than zero. Okay, this has to do with the uh, drawing the molecules in the vesper way and then see which one has a net dipole and doesn't have a net dipole. If I want to draw BF4 boron, so first of all, valence electron boron, boron group 3, fluorine 7, 7 times 4, minus 1, it means plus 1. So it has a valence electron 
uh, this will be 28 29 and 32 electron if i want to draw we have four borons they will make the shape of tetrahedral and tetrahedral always non-polar definitely when we have the peripheral atoms the same if they are not the same we have to check polarity now sf4 sf4 if we want to draw it let me find the valence electron first of all sulfur belongs to group six so six fluorine belongs to group seven four times seven so which is 28 7 times 4 28 plus 6 which is 34 electrons if i want to draw it will be according to vesper 4 fluorine around it and 2 long pairs to, to give me 34 electrons 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and here we have 7 by 4 which is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 by 4, 24, 24 plus 10, 34. Okay, the drawing is correct. If we have to take a close look, it looks like element with surrounded by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's like trigonal by pyramidal, but because of the presence of lone pair, it will have a shape which is C so distorted trigonal by pyramidal let me check its polarity fluorine is more electronegative than sulfur fluorine is more electronegative than sulfur let me draw the arrows from positive to negative positive to negative this will cancel each other but these two they will have a total uh, dipole moment which makes us a four polar if you have to draw the other you will see that they are non-polar number 25 a sample of nitrogen gas has a pressure of 31 millimeter mercury and 100 milli container it's transferred to a new container at the same temperature and it's found to have pressure of 47 the volume of the new gas will be what new container it means the volume is not constant so pv equal on rt the only constant is that the sample it doesn't change which is number of moles the same temperature he said at the same temperature this is the same r is the same so the variables pressure and volume that are subjected to boils low pressure and volume inversely proportional to each other so p1 v1 equal p2 v1 v2 so the first pressure is 1 31 times the volume which is 100 equal second pressure 47.6 times the volume by simple calculation volume is 65.126 milliliter and the best answer is a what is the formal charge on the chlorine atom in oclo minus first of all let me draw it oclo minus in order to uh, find the formal charge the valence electron for oclo minus or group six so six chlorine seven plus six plus one because of the negative total 20 electron let me draw according to vesper first of all we draw single bones chlorine as he told you make sure chlorine has an octet so it's not not exceeding or below octet so one two three four five six seven eight in order to reach stability and to be octet it should be surrounded by eight electrons here one two so three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight if you want to check the number of electrons it will be 20. let me find the formal charge of chlorine what is the formula for the formal charge first of all 
the formal charge of an atom element, if I want to find it, I have to take the valence electron of it as if it is in the elemental form. Chlorine, group seven, so the valence electron seven. Minus, I open bracket. I count the lone pair electrons. One, two, three, four, so four. Plus half the bonded electrons. What are the bonded electrons? One, two, three, four. So simple calculation, it will be one. So the formal charge for chlorine is plus one. Now, 27. When 0 0.355 gram of a compound placed in one liter container at 17 degree, the gas produces pressure 189 millimeter mercury. What is the molar mass? Definitely here I will use PV equal MRT. But let me bring into your attention that the uh, pressure, it needs to change into atmosphere and the temperature into Kelvin because pressure should be in atmosphere. So 189 millimeter mercury divided by 760 millimeter mercury to give me the pressure in atmosphere, which is 0 0.25 atmosphere. The temperature should be 17 plus 273, which is 290 <coughs> Kelvin. Now, let me find the number of mole, which is PV over RT, so 0 0.25, volume already in liter, R 0 0.0821, temperature 290, 0 0.0105 moles, but N equal mass over the molar mass, so the molar mass is the mass over number of moles, 0 0.355, over 0 0.0105 which is 33.8 gram per mole and the answer is B. Now 28. <coughs> 0 0.4 gram of carbon dioxide pressurized cylinder to 0 0.82 atmosphere at 25. What is the volume of the cylinder? Again, PV equal on RT. PV equal NRT, which means V equal NRT over P. And it's the mass over the molar mass, uh, which is 0 0.40 over 44, which is the carbon dioxide, 0 0.082. Temperature should be in Kelvin, so I add 273 over the pressure it is given to me in atmosphere, so 0 0.82. The final answer, 0 0.27 liter, which is 270 milliliter after multiplying by 1,000. Let us see number 29. Polyethylene consists of repeating, this is for polymers, repeating CH2 unit. When stretched out, polyethylene has a length of 0 0.15 nanometer per CH2, CH2 unit, and yani here this one. Every CH2, CH2 unit, it has this uh, 0 0.15 nanometer. If the chemist <laughs> synthesized a single polyethylene molecule long enough to just encircle the Earth, how much would this molecule weigh? And knowing that the circumference of the Earth at the equator is 6,378 kilometer. Okay, let me change nanometer, the one I have in the unit, into kilometer. Every one nanometer corresponds to 10 negative 9 meter. And then let me change it to kilometer. Every one meter is 10 negative 3 kilometer, and the answer is 0 0.15 times 10 negative 12 kilometer. Now, let me find the number of units to encircle the Earth. So, number of units to encircle the Earth 
is 6378 over 0 0.15 times 10 negative 12 which is equal to 4.25 times 10 to power 6 units okay and i want to find the gram for each unit so let me uh, each unit let me find its mass each unit which is ch2 ch2 has a mass which is 28 gram per mole okay so let me find the gram for each unit by changing the units so we can say that 4.25 times 10 to power 6 units multiplied by 28 gram over 1 mole multiplied by 1 mole to change into unit over Avogadro numbers of unit. So the final answer 1.98 times 10 negative 6 gram per unit. Number 30. Draw the Lewis dot structure of XE of 4. Okay, let us draw it. XE of 4. Let me find the valence electrons. XE group 8. So 8 of 7. 7 by 4, 28. So the answer, total valence electron, 32. 28 and two, uh, 8 is 36 electrons. Let us try drawing it. XE surrounded by, according to Vesper, surrounded by 4 fluorine. We have 36. Okay. XE in group 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Fluorine group 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay. <clears throat> so, if I have to look at the bonds around it, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we have 5, 6. Like octahedral, but it's distorted. Because if we have, instead of long pair bonds, it's octahedral. But the presence of two long pair makes it distorted makes it distorted tetrahedral also you can call it square pyramidal okay number 31 draw the lowest dot structure of hydrogen peroxide note there is no central atom the four atoms are in a row so for number 31 we have h o o h so simply i can draw it H O O H 32 Draw two resonance structures Lewis dot for the anion HCO2 minus and on one Lewis dot structure please indicate the formal charge on each atom. Okay, let us do it. We have H CO2 minus. Let me find the valence electron. 1 plus 4 plus 2 times 6 plus 1, which sum up to 18 electron. Okay, if I want to draw carbon, hydrogen, and then <coughs> we have 2 oxygen. I want to draw such that to give me 18 electron carbon uh, it applies and it follows uh, octet rule one two three four five okay one two three four five six seven eight okay so one two three four five six seven eight okay one two three four five six seven eight okay and two because it uh, it follows the duet rule okay also in resonance i can put uh, double bond here so C H oxygen and double bond here no double bond. okay minus okay let me find the formal charge let me start by hydrogen hydrogen 
formal charge equal to the uh, valence electron on the elemental form, which is one minus number of lone pair, no lone pair, plus half bonded electron, one, two. So one minus one, which is zero. So the formal charge here, this is formal charge calculation is zero. Let me find for carbon. Again, the valence electron of the elemental form, which is group 4, 4, minus long pair, number, no long pair, plus half bonded electron, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 over 2, 4, 4 minus 4, also it is 0. Let me find for this oxygen formal charge. So, oxygen group 6 minus number of lone pairs one two three four five six plus half shared electron which is two six okay two seven so minus one for this oxygen six group uh, group six minus lone pair one two three four plus half shared electron one two three four so 6 minus 6, which is 